Hello everybody, welcome back to the L1 show, where we're going to talk about robots and nonsense and other things that you'll enjoy this week. And now it's just the AI section. It is pretty much just AI. There's a little bit of space. A little bit of space, but it's going to be AI in space. We're never going back into space without AI. Think about that. There will always be AI on our spaceships from now on. What a world. Some sci-fi has predicted that that will end badly. (laughs) But Microsoft is all in and they are putting Copilot in everything. And apparently now they've decided that, you know, one Copilot to rule them all. They'll be putting one in Windows. Windows and or Microsoft. Bleh, Microsoft announces Windows Copilot, an AI personal assistant for Windows 11. How did Cortana go? So it's going to be over here on the side, just like it is on Bing. You can talk to it. It's going to be able to offer you different things. I would love to get that and be like, uh, Windows Copilot, how can I stop Windows telemetry? <laughs> Please stop updating when I don't want you to update. <laughs> Something tells me that it'll have some built-in blocks. I'm sorry, I can't do that. Yeah. And India. Now, mm-hmm. India has an extreme rural Population. class of people yeah. who are just completely not connected to anything. But much like Africa, they do still have phones, but they don't really understand AI or apps. So how do you reach them? Microsoft's AI reaches Indian villages. You do it with WhatsApp. So everybody uses WhatsApp and this company figured out like, hey, we'll just put this AI through WhatsApp. And then the Indian rural people can use it. And it turns out they can and they love it. Huh. Nobody liked the Snapchat AI, but for some reason people like this one. This one's not built into to WhatsApp, though. Mm. It's just using it yeah. as a, a go-between. So it's something they're already used to. Plus, WhatsApp is in their language. Yeah. And I guess the, the API can translate. So uh, when we talk about AI, there's lots of different ways that AI could uh, destroy us, right? But what is the most dangerous? Microsoft Chief says deepfakes are biggest AI concern. The labor market is also pretty substantial, yeah. but I could see deep fakes being pretty terrifying. Rampant unemployment and surveillance, I think, are the, probably the actual biggest problems here. I'm not going to be too worried about deep fakes when I'm being hunted by a spot. Oh, you might be if, if it's just generating like, oh, yeah, this person's a criminal. I have a picture of him doing this horrible thing, but it's just That's a true. deep fake. Yeah, there will be a lot of that. But that'll be after we've already gotten to the point where they can control us mm. with the AI. You know, that'll just be used to remove the the dissidents. And I do plan to be a dissident. Doesn't look good for me. You can't say that. You didn't hear that, chat. <laughs> I think that's a banned word. <laughs> and uh, up until now, chat GPT has been in Bing. But now, a little quid pro quo, it seems. Bing search is coming to chat GPT. Just threw up my mouth a little bit. So now it's not just the training set. Now it's going out on the internet and learning in real time. Think about that. Ooh. <laughs> Is that going to be a Tay situation where it's like there's no one to moderate well, it quickly enough? It's that whole thing where it's like, well, it's wrong. Why is it wrong? Well, because it learned wrong stuff. Well, now it has an unlimited tap of, of wrong stuff. Huh. Misinformation. Google's Bard is not uh, up there on top. They're trying hard, though. They're adding new features. Google Bard adds images for more visual responses. So as it's chatting to you, it can show you some images that will support its claims. Or it'll just be deep faked images and it won't matter. Eventually, yeah, for sure, right? Yeah. Pretty soon they're going to work on a thing where you can give it an image and talk to it about the image and let it do things to the image or give you stuff that's contextual only to that image. So you could update a picture of Rue, and have a conversation about Rue. Trying to figure out the size of elderberries is gonna be impossible. <laughs> that, that knowledge was lost to us. <laughs> well, so I'm looking for shrubs, chat. I'm trying to find information about how big some of these get. And like, it's best if you can find someone who's grown them in a similar climate. So you can get an idea of like what a mature specimen looks like. But you, you see so many pictures online and it's like, here's a picture of the berry cluster. And I'm like, no, I need to know how big the shrub is, like with a human next to it. Well, I mean, don't they get bigger over time? 
Wouldn't that be objective? Yeah, but they there's or like a max a size they max out to. Mm. So you need to know what a mature. But like, if AI is generating all that, will it just start making up? It's just gonna show you Monty Python clips. Yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah them in front of the elderberries. And uh, Alexa, Alexa used to be one of the the names we thought of when we thought of artificial intelligence, right? Not so much anymore. Alexa is now one of the older generations and one of the dumbest AIs still in existence, but Amazon is looking to change that. Amazon looks to adapt Alexa to the rise of chat GPT. She's going to college. Rapidly. Yeah. Data set college, the worst kind of college. Think of all the things she's been recording in your home for years to learn from. Yeah, exactly. Uh. And she's already in your home, right? So when that update gets rolled out, you don't necessarily even know about it. What if she already knows like how you communicate as a family and then she just replicates that? Like what if you have a really dysfunctional family and so she just starts calling you like swear words at or, the end of every answer? Or starts, you know, spreading discontent. Yeah. He's cheating. Here's your, here's your grocery list, like I already told you. And up until now, we've had a lot of uh, image generation and also image editing AIs that have done very impressive things. And then on the other end, we've got the text AIs. But once again, the marriage of the two is creating something entirely new. Adobe Photoshop's new generative fill AI tool lets you manipulate photos with text. Whoever wrote this article, they have a weird obsession with clowns. Every yeah. like example image they put a clown in. But I thought it did a great job with the cup and the shadow. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Cat looks good. The uh, the other image, yeah, like here of the rabbit being replaced with the clown, not great, but not terrible either. The grass really and it helps that a lot. They got the basketball got a shadow. Yeah, but the the robot didn't on the sidewalk. That's true. He kind of, I mean, like there's a little bit of one, but it's a little off. Still pretty impressive and still a major threat to objective truth going yeah. forward. And Meta, again, also not the leader in AI, but working hard from behind, they are focusing on language. Meta's new AI models can recognize and produce speech from more than 1,000 languages. They're trying to preserve certain languages. I, I kind of had the thought of like, if it starts being, quote, usefully wrong or just making up things in certain languages, like, will anybody know if it's a yeah. language that's not commonly spoken? It's interesting because remember they were trying to keep some of these dead languages alive? Yeah. Because no one speaks them. We could get a world where we believe the AI because no one speaks the language, but it's totally not what the language was. Yeah. Or like think of like Native American tribes where there's only a very small pool of speakers and then imagine them interfacing with an AI like this and they're like, that's not... I don't understand anything this thing is saying, like, because it's just completely made up. That's our future. Yeah. And will they be making up the weather at some point? I don't know. Maybe AI can still do some good, though. I, this uh, maybe. Uh, what's the downside here? Can you think of one? Google's AI-enabled flood forecasting goes global. So there's actually a feature like this on Realtor.com, but it, it's based on historical data from the government about areas that have flooded in the past. So I assume maybe it's looking at that and then forecasting based on that. It claims it's going to give you as much as, I think, five to seven days before a flood. A riverine flood, which I guess is different than other bodies of water. Oh, so it's like short term. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, like, yeah. get out now. Right. And, uh, you know, we've learned that Intel going all in on AI chips. Turns out they're not the only one. Meta bets big on AI with custom chips and a supercomputer. Please, we're trying so hard to stay relevant. But they're not giving up on the metaverse. No, that's, I, that's why I feel like it's two teams that are kind of like pulling metaverse or meta apart. Left hand doesn't know what the right's doing. Or maybe they're hoping to bring AI to the metaverse. All somehow. the people, you know what? The metaverse is empty, right? That's the problem, nobody cares. Fill it with AI. They're just Problem bots. solved. Yeah. And the self-driving cars, man, wow. They've just been forgotten. Eventually, ChatGPT will be driving these, right? Maybe. I mean, it's a language model, not a... Maybe, though. Well, but the image ones. Yeah. Maybe they'll use that in some way. 
anyway, uh, apparently the economic downturn and the fact that self-driving cars are not the hot new technology has made some former enemies friend up again. Uber teams up with Waymo to add robo taxis to its app. However, with the Waymo ones, you can only go certain points where the, the route is common. I think it's true of the Uber ones too. You'll only get the robot if you're doing those routes. Yeah. But you remember these guys were not friends for a long time. There was a lot of intellectual theft and stuff like that. A lot they've, of drama. They've made up. You can sit with us at lunch again. Not next to us. One seat in between. But we're like, they're secretly passing notes to each other. <laughs> and we're secretly passing notes from Mars <gasps> because we are simulating what might happen if the aliens contact us. Alien signal beamed to Earth from Mars in SETI? SETI test? SETI. Uh, search for extraterrestrial. Yeah, it's, forget the acronym. It's We're looking for aliens. It's kind of like an art project from what I gather. Like it's it's put together by an artist and it's like, let's simulate what it would be like if we got a message and how would we decode it? There's different teams working to decode the message. Do you ever look at the package of stuff that we broadcast? Is, isn't it like a gold disc with like random shit on it? It's, they show like uh, the layout of our solar system and where we are. Yeah. And then there's some, it's like the, the illustrated man. Yeah. That shows yeah. us. And uh, we also give them some examples of our, culture like music and stuff like that art this sounds like garbage they put it down <laughs> i hope it's all britney spears her greatest hits catalog anyway the one of the big things is like well maybe we're getting the signals and we just can't recognize them so they're going to try to you know put something weird out there and see who can pick up on it who can figure it out you can play along at home if you want and moon landing that's the hot new thing right if you're a space company it's time to head for the moon now, we know that SpaceX got one contract, and that was hotly contested. But apparently, there's room for everybody on the moon. NASA picks Blue Origin to make second human-crewed lunar lander. So this is going to be later on, 2029. How arrogant to think that the society will still <laughs> exist at that point. The Remember the moon gas station? Moon Buckies? They expect that to be there by then. So this is going to, they're going to go to the moon Buckies. And some of the astronauts are then going to take this thing down to the... And they're going to spend a week... Just hanging out. Pooping in diapers. Mm. And uh, I don't know where Marlin, Texas is exactly. I would expect it to be extremely rural, right? It, yeah, just based on this. We're getting into the nonsense section. I know we have this problem in like... Uh, Philadelphia and Chicago. I didn't know that rural Texas was also suffering from this issue. A Texas high school had to move its graduation because only five students were reportedly eligible to graduate. So I guess the other ones are trying to do summer courses to make up for it. Or do GED, maybe. They only had 33 seniors, which makes so me think. Rural, it's yeah. Very tiny town. And 28 of them couldn't do it. Wow. BMW is also getting into self-driving and they have some interesting new technology. How do you iterate on self-driving? I mean, it's kind of hands-off, right? Well, they have a terrible new feature. In a new BMW sedan, drivers can change lanes using just their eyes. As someone who gets easily distracted by trees, flowers, bushes, I feel like I would just be constantly veering off the road. Well, the way that you do it is you look at your mirrors. All right, so if you look at one mirror, you go one way, other mirror the other way. What if you're a drug dealer and you're constantly looking for cops in your rear view <laughs> that gets you pulled over? <laughs> what if I'm trying to look at that oak leaf hydrangea in my mirror as I drive past? Also, a pro drug dealer tip, do not drive a current year BMW. Big red flag. This one, oh, oh my goodness, so many pop-ups. Uh, I did not understand. I needed more information on this story. One of the many yeah. stories where it's like they just don't tell you why or what caused it, and I, I need to know. Duluth landlord charged with intentionally setting apartment ablaze while blasting, we didn't start the fire. First degree arson. They found that he also drilled his own gas tank on his truck to get the gas. I mean, like, why not just go buy gas? This feels like a mental health episode. Very much, very much. Which means that he'll be released 
with a PR bond to mm-hmm. do it again. And here's another mental health issue. U.S. professor fired after machete threat to New York Post reporter. So this is a pro not having babies person. And there were people on the campus who were pro keeping babies. And she didn't like that. So she went and like destroyed some of their stuff. The New York Post was investigating that. And when they uh, approached her, she pulled out the machete, chased them out of the building. She carries a machete at the university? She apparently had one in her office. You know. As you do. When you're advising students, sometimes you got to cut through a jungle. She's cutting through the jungle of higher education. Maybe she teaches anthropology. <laughs> and uh, when I was in school, did you have dare when you were in school? Yeah. I had yeah, dare when I was in school. And it really was like a hellfire and brimstone. If you touch this stuff your life is going to be destroyed. Did you watch, um, at least in my health class, we had to watch like police videos of people high on those drugs. No, we didn't have videos. We, we had to, we watched someone on meth and like they showed to you like the pictures of people like when they were young and then slowly over the years as the meth took um, away their teeth and sunk their face in. And See, meth wasn't, hadn't really emerged. Meth was still a trucker thing when I was young. Oh, okay. Or I was in high school at least. Uh, we had just prescription pills for our thing. Well, there was that too. We we covered both in our class. Well, things have changed considerably since then. Now we have a different kind of presentation in schools. Safer snorting kits hounded out at BC High School after drug presentation. So instead of <sighs> that was now what we did was known as the abstinence based drug program. I think uh, Bush's wife. Bush won. His wife spearheaded that, right? Abstinence-based drug policy. I'm not sure. Maybe it was Reagan. but it was before uh, my time. The whole idea was you never do drugs. Now, since then, they've been talking about, like, that's not the best way to do it because it's not realistic. It's sort of like how they handle teen pregnancy, right? Instead of yeah. saying you can never have sex, they say have safe sex. This is in that vein. Except there's a difference between drug use and sex, but... Well, it's funny that they point out some of the bullet points that they said were introduced in this course. One of them was when you're going to be snorting drugs, make sure that you have condoms and lubricant with you because when you snort drugs, you often want to have sex. You don't want to be caught without that. (laughs) Uh, They say uh, this was the University of Victoria. This is Canadian. Uh, They say that that was a third party and they're not responsible for it, but you let them in. Did no one vet their program before? Odd. I think if you just read over the materials. Yeah. And Indiana has been suffering under a horrible fascist Dystopian. rule. They've really been stepping on the freedoms of their people, but good news. Indiana to lift its ban on throwing stars this summer. July. Start your countdown. For July. Just in time for July 4th. It's not enough to blow off your fingers with fireworks. We also need to have throwing stars at the 4th of July party. This is all spearheaded by these axe throwing businesses. Oh, yeah. These are popular. I've had some friends who've done this. They want to throw more stuff. And apparently the stars are a big hit. Interesting. I was a little bit disappointed when I learned because in the 80s, Krista, you know, you you weren't around for this, but uh, the ninja was a hot thing. We had the Ninja Turtles. We had the mall ninja. In my generation, the people who ran around, you know. <laughs> Ours were actual ninjas. Yeah. But always American. Actually, there's a movie called American Ninja. And, uh, you know, they used the various ninja tools and stuff and they, they learned yeah. the, the martial arts. But then later in life, I learned that the actual traditional ninjas, the only way they ever really used the throwing stars is they threw them at the hands of their opponents to try to disarm them. Oh. They weren't an immediate kill shot in the eye like every movie that I've That's ever, ever made. Yeah. <laughs> And like I said earlier, the confiscated phone is becoming a very dangerous thing. This week is maybe the the high water mark at this point. Is this Guyana? Guyana? I couldn't tell. Guyana? People lit deadly school fire over confiscated phone. 19 dead children. (gasps) That's right. Wow. Someone took her phone away from her and she said, I will burn this place down. True to her word. How old were these children? They were pretty young. I don't think they tell a lot of information about the kids, you know, because of the 
rules. The horrific, yeah. 30 children hospitalized, 19 dead. Wow. There's probably also some building codes that weren't followed there, right? I, I guess, yeah. Do, I would think, does... too, like, we used to have to practice fire drills pretty often. Right. I would think that as soon as you smelt smoke, maybe, maybe they just assumed it wasn't anything that bad or didn't go. Maybe it went up really fast, too. It was bad. And you know what else is bad? When we are sold the promise of security, which is always a false promise and should never be traded for freedom, but we do it. And then what do we get? AI scanner used in hundreds of U.S. schools misses knives. Now you might be thinking, well, it's probably just like one of those little pocket case knives, right? Not quite. Is there a picture? Ooh. That's what got through. That's a full tang, which means that the actual metal part extends down into, into the, the handle. handle. Yeah. So that was a big piece of metal that was missed. It was really common. I don't know if this is still common, but like everyone kind of carried like little like pocket knives yeah. and stuff at my school. I've always, always had a knife in my pocket. Like today I don't because I'm in the basketball shorts and it's just, Ugh. you know, it's not convenient. If but... I have a purse, I usually have one with me. Yeah. And it ain't for killing. But yeah. There's a lot of reasons you might need a knife. Well, and if you get like a multi-tool one, then you've got like pliers and all kinds of stuff. The, in it. the uh, scissors, the Leatherman skeletal. Yeah, I do like yours. It's got the pliers in it. I can't tell you how many times I've used that. I have a, a Leatherman, but it's not the skeletal, so it's like super, super heavy. Yeah, that's I, beauty, I should have gotten one like the beauty yours. of the skeletal. I'll give them a free advertisement here. So this is a company that does its evolve weapon free zones. Uh, they promise not just x-ray but ai to look at the x-ray and identify weapons so bbc tested it they got 40 percent of knives like that through wow i wonder what the why it didn't register the others because it's bad well so maybe it's like a certain type of metal it doesn't pick up or well then that would be a failure yeah that is a it? failure but I'm, I'm curious how it failed some good uh some like what there was a, a stabbing from behind some kid got him like seven or eight times to like a prison stabbing Oof. because that thing failed. I mean, not just because that thing, it's, it's the fault of the person with the knife, but right. they paid a lot of money to try and to, prevent to, it. To yeah. Get through it. Ooh. And I know you love <laughs> doom. This is a tough one to say. This is, um, Oh wow. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. But, uh, this is also a tough one to read because it's terrifying because this is one of those volcanoes. That's like the last time we saw it was the year 800. Mm. And it was real bad when that happened. Popocatepetl <laughs> <laughs> volcano spew smoke and ash, putting millions of Mexicans on alert. You know they they mentioned this is Mexico City, right? They mentioned that uh, the locals have a name for it, and they just call it popo. So maybe they have trouble too. Yeah, maybe it's a a native word. That looks very Mordorish, doesn't it? It does. I do. I recently followed a, like a geology subreddit and it's great. I love seeing all the different things. There was a big volcanic eruption in Russia on the, the eastern side. Yeah, eastern. Recently. How annoying would that be? It would be annoying. To deal with that. And look how it streaks and like how that's going to be nasty. They've brought in the military to, uh, to help, but like, I don't know. What are they, they I guess, to evacuate people if it, it gets worse? Yeah, shoot the volcano. <laughs> Right now, they're just sweeping up. Well, it's not too bad. That's more than our emergency yeah, workers. That's not the worst thing in the world if they're trying to improve air quality. But yeah, we don't know what it's going to do. No one does. But if it's the worst case scenario, it's probably going to be real bad for everybody. Let's hope that it's not the worst case and that it's just getting a little rumbly and it's tumbly. Now, this is another one of these battery stories. And I included I, this just to trigger you. But it's, I'm super hyped for this. Like, it wh sounds what interesting. If, it's real? if this real, yeah. it changes everything. If, we, if this guy dies mysteriously, we know this was real. Mm. Engineers at UMass Amherst harvest abundant clean energy from thin air 24-7. So these guys were doing energy research. If I understand this correctly, they found some kind of weird thing that they could grow that would actually generate electricity when water moved through it. But then they figured out it wasn't that they had to grow that specific thing. It was just the space of the holes. The trypto tryptophobia thing. It'll trigger it, trigger it because it's yeah, just tons lots, of little holes. Yeah, lots of holes. And then something about when it moves through these layers, because of the size of the hole, the water 
And I guess it's, um, what do you call that where water will travel up through a tube? I don't know. I know what you're talking about, but I don't know the name for it. It's engaged. Chat, chat knows it. Uh, that will generate power. And if you do it like this big cube, I guess it's a rectangle. Uh, <laughs> and you can layer them on top of each other. Then you can actually generate a decent amount of power as long as there's water in the air, which is almost always true. In some it places. would work in yeah hum- humid environments, which is something that we've struggled with. In the uh, past. I think it's a low power now, but again, it's stackable and could be improved. And with this, as long as you could, if you had a water source and you were generating enough electricity to convert that water source into steam and humidify it, wouldn't you perpetually create? Maybe. I, I don't understand all the engineering. I thought that was interesting, though. Such a dream, right? Yeah. I get, I don't know that we'll ever hear anything about it ever again. Probably not, but... You get your Starlink, you get your moisture cube, and just go into the hills. And just disappear. Yeah. And uh, plastics. We talk a lot about plastics. We always knew that plastic was bad because it doesn't biodegrade. Now we know that it's even worse because microplastics will eventually destroy us all. And some people are looking to solve that. Sip and snack, meet the edible coffee cup. Oh, there's an, uh, an ambulance. Those are the plastic police. Which one, what is this one made out of? So there used to be, when I was in college, our school used like, they were made out of like potato starch, I think. They were like spoons and stuff like that. And a friend of mine tried to eat his, but you couldn't really eat it. Oat bran, wheat flour, and water. I feel like that would disintegrate with coffee in it, but I guess not. No, it does after 40 minutes. You gotta drink your coffee quick. <laughs> yeah, you got you got a limited time. Then you can eat it. Uh, the problem is, it is four times more expensive than a regular cup. That's not surprising. Interesting though. Yeah. And this is I am so proud of all of you. Let me just say that because I thought that this would just blow over like all the other outrages. But people are sticking to this. I don't understand why people care one way or the other. But and I think they chose the wrong people to turn against right your bro drinkers are not going to tolerate this betrayal and it's continuing into it's what are we like week number six at this point nobody imagined it would go this long bud light sales continue to plummet over rainbow can backlash it wasn't a rainbow can it was just her on the can so yeah, uh, we're now down to 28% this week, which is a continued revision with 27% last week. Those may not seem like big numbers, but in the world of Bud Light, those are big numbers. And six weeks into the summer, like this is Bud Light season, right? Yeah, everyone's starting to mow. So, mow your grass, drink a Bud Light. It's tough. Red also, truck, blue jeans. There was also, that didn't include the Target store. Did you see the Target story? They had like big displays at the front of their store for LGBTQ and somebody was like, no, you put those in the back of the store and they're going to be like a third of the size because people are really tired of being told how to think and what to believe. I hope that's why it is. And there's not some other nefarious thing that's going on here. I think it might just be people don't like gay people. Sadly. Eh. I mean, the Bud Light drinkers. Yeah. We shouldn't paint with a broad brush in either direction. Uh, I was not currently, before this morning, I was not aware of the threat that I had from these mushrooms. These are uh, the angel of death, sometimes referred to. Mm. It will shut down your liver. Suck it, death cap. Scientists find potential antidote to world's deadliest mushroom. If, if this is what I'm thinking it is. So the reason so many people die from this is because there's a very similar lookalike in Asia and so we get immigrants who come over, they are used to foraging for this particular mushroom on their country. Then they see these here and they're like, oh, that's this thing. And it's not. And it can actually shut down your liver if you don't get it pumped out of your stomach quick enough. Uh, you know, they say, well, you know, they say, but in the past, we've learned that in many cases, especially for mushrooms and like lizards and stuff, they'll have the bright colors to warn you. But these guys, no. these are like stealth in it. Look at them. They are stealth. Yeah. The other one that is in a similar family, uh, it has like the red and white. It's like the typical mushroom. It's the also... Mario mushroom. Yeah, it's venomous as well. Or poisonous as well. Don't trust them. Yeah. But there's an antidote now, hopefully. I often get uh, 
mushrooms in my yard, especially after a mow. Mm-hmm. I've never been curious to go like, eat one. It's like, mm, let me just eat that. Never had that. Never. Well, have you, have you ever foraged for mushrooms before? I've never. Uh. <clears throat> Some people go into the woods and wooded areas to forage for mushrooms. Other people do it to use intravenous drugs and have sex. Hmm. Plymouth Hope palm trees cut down by council and bid to stop people having sex in public. Wow, think of all the pollinators and <laughs> wildlife that you've just screwed over. Does, and the beauty and the shade. And, hmm. It does seem like there would be a better solution here. Now, apparently this is right next to some sort of clinic or outreach facility. And uh, people tend to just, just to get out of the way, just hop in there. Have a little sex. Do you think that will really stop them just not having some palm trees? I don't. It seems like nothing will stop you when you have that level of addiction. Yeah, I don't. You've just made you've made the area worse for no gain. This may be the. This is like uh, one the, sentence. The shortest story ever that we've had here. <laughs> Woman accused of breaking into restaurant to make a salad, ruining $500 worth of food items. That's impressive. So they count that $500 because once she's touched it legally, they have to throw it it's out. It's contaminated. Yeah. So she just went through and made a, a nice salad. And uh, oh, Cobb County. It's a Cobb salad. That's Georgia, right? Georgia. Yes, Smyrna. Yeah. That's definitely Georgia. What a weird thing. Now, I remember we talked about this guy. Uh, he, remember the Salt Bay? The guy who was... Yeah, yeah, the meme. Salt? So this guy made a, a video that uh, mocked that. And he called himself Noodle Bay because he's a noodle vendor. And he was criticizing the Vietnamese leadership. Now, he was arrested. That case has been rolling out up until now. And now we have this the, is sad. the end of it. Vietnam jails noodle vendor who mocked ministers' lavish dining. So the leader went to Salt Bay's restaurant, a guy. Yeah. Which is like. Didn't they put like gold flakes or something yeah, on like his food? Yeah, $500 a plate or yeah. whatever. During a time when he was telling the Vietnamese people that, you know, it was hard economic times. Yeah, tighten your belts. Blah. So I think this guy got, what, five years? Wow. For that. They said he had also posted 19 articles and 25 videos to distort and smear the state. They were just meme videos. <laughs> We don't know why he's been rad radicalized against us. I don't know what caused this. It's terrifying. It's terrifying to think as bad as it is here, it's so much worse everywhere else. Uh. And here in the beautiful bluegrass, oh. we often get a lot of stories like this. Man shot roommate in Kentucky for eating last hot pocket, police say. A lot of disputes like this also over shared driveways. <laughs> well, these guys live together. Uh. So this guy was 64. Found out the guy had eaten the last Hot Pocket. The guy apparently knew what he was dealing with here. He tried to flee. Took one in the butt cheek. Ooh. Here's the craziest part. This drives me crazy. $7,500 bond for shooting a man over a Hot Pocket. That's an unreasonable human being that should not be among us. And yet. Oh. I, what a weird thing to be that angry about. And here we have some Kia boys and a Kia girl and a Kia mom. Guardian arrives in stolen Hyundai. Hyundai. Hyundai to pick up teens arrested for auto theft, police say. So I believe it's these four are the teens who had, uh, they had stolen two Kias and were having fun racing them and such. They all got arrested. And of course they're released because they're juveniles and, but they have to be released to a parent. So she needed to get down to the courthouse or the jail or whatever. So she got a ride with somebody in a stolen Kia. Uh -huh. or Hyundai. Just astonishing. What do you think her bond will be? $5. Was it her car or did she get a ride with someone? It was, well, it wasn't the person's car who was giving her a ride either. The well, person right. who was giving her a ride stole the car. Yeah, I guess she wouldn't be. Yeah, that's not her fault. You wouldn't know just because you got in a car with someone, whether it was theirs or not. I think she knew. Do you do you ask someone every time you get in the car, is this your vehicle? If it's a Hyundai. Yeah. <laughs> Can you show me your weird. paperwork real quick? <laughs> well, you know what? The steering column being ripped off might, might be, have yeah. been an indicator. 
And uh, Austin, Texas, they have uh, some cops who might be a little bit unruly, might be doing some things they shouldn't. And they've decided a while back that they wanted to introduce a bill that would create oversight for that kind of thing. That was Proposition A. And the cops have responded. SB 2209 testimony draws attention to police oversight in Austin could stop Prop A. So the police then introduced their own bill, Senate Bill 2209, which would create a system that would make Prop A ineffective even if it were voted in. So they're going to get this in before that. And this prevents any civilian interaction. They gave... uh, they asked the guy, the lawmaker, is like, well, what role should civilians play in policing? And his response was, I can't read that from this distance. If I didn't have, that's not what he said. If I didn't have to negotiate contracts, if that wasn't a thing, I would say they have no role. Well, good luck ever talking to any of the people in the communities you police. Yeah, but people are stupid. They talk to cops. Stop talking to the police for any reason. Unless, you know, you're being stabbed or whatever. And uh, by the Jeep culture, the more I learned about Jeep culture, the more well, the chat has it told us about that. And uh, we were like, that's not a thing. And it absolutely is. You just bought a car. Ah, you no, make it your whole personality. You didn't bro. design it. You didn't build it. You just bought it. Come on. Public drunkenness, disorderly conduct leads to 230 arrests at annual Texas Jeep weekend event. Now I was looking at this picture and I was like, eh, some of those are Jeeps, but some of those are just regular. Pickups. Yeah, there's some trucks, too. And uh, it turns out that the Jeep people have also been driven away. So they started this sort of like unofficial event. Jeep has nothing to do with this. And it got so popular that everybody else started showing up and the Jeep people were like, oh, this is not cool anymore. Yeah. So now it's just bedlam. It's just people going to get drunk on the beach and fight. <laughs> Literally that. Yeah. 230 arrests. Most of them were misdemeanors. Most of them will probably not even get any punishment for that. Uh- would you want to drive on the beach? Wouldn't that be bad for your car? If you had a Jeep, it'd be fine. Right? I guess, yeah. That's the point. I'm just going to take my little tiny car and just <laughs> drive on the sand. The old shooting range I used to go to was real tough to get to. It was like yeah. real off-road. And I had my little Infinity G37. <laughs> I was like trying to bounce down there. It's, you'd hear the skid plate and be like, ooh. And, uh... This is a very, very sad story. Oh, this but it's is like a, what they say with birds, but it's not true for birds. Well, it is true for bison. Yellowstone baby bison put to death after visitor picks it up, leading herd to reject it. Now, it wasn't just let me love this bison. Apparently, they were crossing a waterway, and the little bison was too small, and it was struggling at the side. Oh. So this guy got down there and... Tried to help. Got it out. Probably they were making a TikTok video while they were at it. I'm know? sure. But then the herd was like, nah. You smell like a human. I don't like it. We're not having it anymore. And so they just chose to euthanize it because it would just be there to die alone. So sad. Yeah. It's interesting that they didn't, I don't, I don't know how bison work, but like it's interesting they didn't find like another herd to try to integrate it with like in captivity or something. But I guess that's probably also very expensive. The other herd would probably just think that it was a spy. <laughs> it's a spy bison. <laughs> Spison. And smuggling animals is always a hilarious story, except it's not hilarious because you realize that these parrots will never get to be parrots. Now they're just in a cage for the rest of their life. Chirping sounds lead airport officials to bag filled with smuggled parrot eggs. So they hatch in captivity. Yeah. What? No, they hatched on the flight. So he started with eggs. And by the time he got to passing through security, one of them was making noise. That would suck if you're the bird too, because they don't have in-flight meals for birds. So now they are in a, a rescue. They're doing well. Look how cute they are. They are adorable, right? Those, I don't. I wouldn't want one because they live a really long time, and they're they're a lot of work as well. But they're cute. I think they'd be happier in their their native environment, environment. Yeah. And remember, we did the story. Was it beavers that were joining the pandas or bears or something like that? Or no, it was gorillas apes and they let some sort of water creature in and it because there was it the, otters might have been otters because during the, the the pandemic the people weren't coming to the zoo and the apes got depressed oh and then they were doing renovations and the otters escaped and got into the ape enclosure and it, like the apes loved them oh and it well, who doesn't love otters so i remember reading that article in the zoo was like we're gonna do this with a lot of more animals and i, I thought well wait a minute 
some of those animals eat each other, right? Could what could bad things happen there? <laughs> Ribbon cutting canceled. Hippo Palooza pushed back after Grand Rapids hippo kills antelope. Aren't hippos like in the wild? I know I've heard in Africa like if you're an African person, you're terrified of hippos because I think, they're really, really mean and they tend to like bite hands and stuff off. I think hippos are the number one killer of humans, aren't they? I think so, yeah. Which is wild. Yeah. So uh, I can't remember the name of this antelope. They mentioned it here. It was like Chippy or so. Chopper. Chopper. So this is Chopper. Chopper was introduced oh. into the, the hippo enclosure and it was immediately killed. Actually, he didn't die. They tried to save him, but they couldn't. You know, too much. <laughs> there, he didn't die instantly, is what you're saying. No, no, no. He suffered for a little bit. So they're gonna rethink the. There are some terrifying images of hippos. Like they, they like wait and ambush stuff by the banks of rivers. They're also very fast in the water. Yeah, for as big as they are, very cute. But I would not want to be near one, especially the babies. Oh yeah, the Fiona. Terrible. Fiona's ours here, in, like around Cincinnati. Very small hippo. And there is a very special whale out there, and people are fascinated by it, but the Norwegian government is warning you, please don't get too close to it. Norway warns people to keep away from the spy whale for animal safety. This looks like a narwhal. Is so it not? What kind of whale is it? Narwhal's got a horn. Oh, oh. yeah, good point. He is a... A beluga? Maybe. I don't know. I can't identify whales. It's a, a dark spot in my knowledge. So you can see his little attachment he's got here, right? <laughs> They believe that the Russians trained him to be a spy. It's crazy to me that, like, they talk about Russians tra uh, training, like, dolphins and whales and stuff. And, like, we're saying that seriously. That's actually a thing. Oh, yeah, I mean, something's going on there, right? And because he was obviously trained to be a spy, he is very comfortable with humans. Look how adorable this guy is. <laughs> he speaks English with a very heavy Russian accent. <laughs> Problem is... He's very used to humans and he wants to be around humans, but he tends to be like smashed up by the boats a little bit. Mm. So they are saying, please don't go check him out. Just let him be. Let him spy. <laughs> let him spy. We know what he is, but, you know, he's not hurting anybody. Uh, and I was a little disappointed in this one because they did not give us a picture of the undercarriage. Oh, new frog species with groins of fire discovered in Amazon with colors that resemble flames. So... There he is. He does have some interesting leg coloration. Does that mean he's poisonous, venomous, whatever? Isn't that true a lot of times of frogs if they're really brightly colored? If I encountered him in the wild, I certainly would not lick him. Yeah, I wouldn't touch him. I mean, not, I'm not going to lick him at all, but especially not his groin. Mm. I saw a, uh, a little American toad in my garden the other day. And some orange lizards. Some wildlife. Uh, I didn't sort nonsense this week. And uh, really pointed out what a failure that was immediately because somehow we had two whale stories. Killer whales teaching young to attack boats, experts claim. I've seen a lot of stories about this. I think the internet algorithm is like, you would probably really like this. Well, I mean, I like whale stories. Uh, They're not wrong. So they believe that uh, one of these whales was traumatized by being hit by a boat or something. Yeah. And is now teaching the other whales to attack the boats <laughs> to not respect authority and it's like the little yacht boats so they can take them out though they one uh boat they attacked managed to make it back to port but then was sunk because of the damage wow and that's scary that's a video which they did not include but they said that they were definitely noticing that uh the mother was teaching the young yeah. Like she would do a run and then she would turn around and be like, oh, are yeah, you trying? And then they would do a run. Imagine a world where Jeff Bezos' yacht is sunk by killer whales. <laughs> Russian trained killer whales. Oh, you know weird, what? Weird. They didn't bring that up. Maybe the Russians are training Ooh. them to do this. You know who's probably going to love this is the Japanese. They're like, we've been telling well, you. Well, we knew. Come on. We'll take your apology now. Then we'll give you a whale steak. It's always good to see nature uh, reclaiming Recovering. after being removed. We're not sure why these guys left, but they're back. Platypuses, that is, I think it's platypi, returned to Sydney's Royal National Park after disappearing for decades. Weird little animals. Strange. They are cute. Another animal that's really cute, but you probably shouldn't mess with. They do have venom, I believe. And they lay eggs. Wow. Strange little mammal. Good news, though. Wait, are they a mammal or are they a marsupial? 
what animal am I thinking of that lays eggs but is a mammal? Kangaroos are that way. I think. No, kangaroos are the pouch. Don't they have the egg outside their body for a while? Am I imagining I think they that? live birth it and then throw it in the pouch? Huh. I don't remember now, and I I don't have the my phone is like two feet away and I can't Google it. You know who I bet would be able to answer this question? Taylor Swift. I don't think so. Taylor Swift fans try selling rainwater from Soggy Gillette Stadium concert. Blech. I remember seeing pictures of that, and it was pretty epic with her. Yeah. Soaked in the rain. Yeah, I think it was it was a pretty big downpour. Pretty majestic. I think I would probably be a little bit bored. It was she probably does like a two hour show, right? You got to be rained on the entire time. I think it was delayed because it was thunderstorming, and then it, then it rained. Uh, this is estimated the Eras tour will be the biggest tour ever, and Tay Tay could be a billionaire at the end of it. Think about that. How about think about this? This is not completely unrealistic. Taylor Swift for president. Ugh. Thirty-two. Taylor in thirty-two. I could see it. Will she be old enough to be president by then? Probably. Probably, yeah. Beyonce is also on tour, and apparently that is also a very hot ticket. And some of the insane realities that we're living with are bucking up against commerce here. Homeless families to be moved out of London Hotel during Beyonce's tour. I assume that they booked it up for her team. Well, you can only book a hotel for like 30 days at a time, I think. Right. right? So people had, they knew this concert was coming a long time ago before this thing. So they had pre-booked these hotel rooms. And now they get, because they already had the reservation, they get it. Some of these hotel rooms are housing as many as five people. And they are mostly homeless refugees. And they have like a one day window to clean them. That's going to be. That's going to be tough. A bad experience for some Beyonce fans. And uh, I'm here today in my basketball shorts and t-shirt. I'm a big fan of dressing down. I don't see the point of. I was at the store the other day and there was a bus full of, I guess, like prep school kids that came in. They were, they were in like suit and tie. Yeah. All wearing the suit and tie. And I just couldn't help but think how stupid they looked. All matching like that. Uh, just, it's hot too. It's, it's been hot this last week. It was a little cool this morning. But. That's ridiculous. The whole idea. Oh, we got to reload it so we can see the picture. But the whole idea of like, you know. fat squirrel. You got to dress a certain way. is stupid. Yeah. Uh, if we're going to say anything against this man, what we should be talking about is the obvious brain damage that he has conservatives outraged after john fetterman wears shorts this is like everyone being angry that obama wore a tan suit look at this who it's, cares now it's not gonna play the video do we have a That's picture news week news oh, here we go. Garbage. Yeah, there he is. He is, it looks a little out of place i just i don't like politicians wearing brand names i also don't we like should that. ban that they should wear american-made clothing if they're going to spend the money. I like the, give them the NASCAR suits with their sponsors on. Yeah, that, that would also be okay. That's probably why they wear those brands. And the uh, big disappointment, at what was your hype level coming into this? Zero. I didn't even know it existed. I heard like early development stuff, like people were talking about it in some of the Lord of the Rings communities, but no one had super high hopes for it. Would you say that uh, everyone hates it? Uh, that doesn't work because then the grammar is correct. Do you hate it? Do <laughs> we? We hates it. Lord of the Rings Gollum review. We don't want it. We don't needs it. It's. I. I do feel like people are kind of maybe over hating it, but it seems just aggressively mediocre. But isn't that kind of like you know you took the thing we loved and you just made it crappy? Uh, isn't that the? I mean, look what they're doing with Bud Light. People at, like look what they're doing things. with Rings of Power. I've not really even followed this at all, but yeah, I saw uh, I think, like I said, people are definitely being a little overly harsh, but it's not, it's still not good. Like, is this, not worth the price tag. Is this the story of Gollum as a young man or, I mean, it looks fully transformed Quote here. young. Yeah, I think it's like, so in the Council of Elrond chapter and in like the Unfinished Tales, we get some like POVs from Gandalf describing like what Gollum did before and like when they captured him and how they questioned him and figured out 
oh my gosh, he's been telling information to the Dark Lord, blah, blah, blah. I think this is supposed to explore all that from Gollum's point of view. Mm. And it's supposed to be, I think, like a stealth game, but it's just not well implemented is the problem. It could have been good, but it's not good. Do you go check it out? No, not for the cost. I think it, isn't it like 60 bucks? What would you, how, what would the price have to be for you to download that today? Five or 10, maybe. Five or five? <laughs> no. I don't think it's worth the, the high price tag. Well, give us your, uh, oh, beyond its overly simplistic level design, jarringly dated graphics, and deeply uninteresting gameplay, Lord of the Rings Gollum is broken to the point where it's nearly unplayable. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people, even on high-end PCs, like it's getting some serious stutter and, and issues with the graphics. And GameSpot gave it a two. The good is the soundtrack and the new lore. Uh, give us your thoughts on the Gollum games. Overhated but probably not good either overrated and overhated that's a cool system i uh, never thought about that before overhated.com is probably definitely taken right i would think yeah well see you next week yep we'll be we'll be here bye